Good day everybody and we meet yet again and today I just wanted us to uh, discuss projectile motion graphs. This is quite important, uh, whichever exam that you may be considering writing, whether IEB or you know the NS NCS exam, um, you know uh, graphs are quite important uh, for you to understand. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel, just make sure that you do the right thing and welcome to the family. Okay, and uh, hopefully you will enjoy all the great lessons that we've produced thus far. And by the way, um, you are all, all always welcome, by the way, to uh, just uh, hit that thumbs up button. Okay, if you like the lesson. Okay, let's get right into it. Okay, so when we talk projectile motion graphs, okay, let's take a scenario. Um, we'll take scenarios and afterwards we're going to look at uh, how we're going to apply them. Now, the first type of graph that you always uh, will have to uh, know is a, um, a velocity time graph. Okay. Now, I want to take three different scenarios. Okay. Let's start with the first scenario. Suppose we've got a situation, okay, whereby we are dropping something. Okay, let's say we're standing on a building somewhere and we're going to drop something uh, from the top of a building and it's obviously going to fall down to the ground. Okay, so the first thing that we need to note here is that we know that as it falls down to the ground, what's going to happen to the velocity? It's going to keep increasing in velocity up until we get to that point. But what do we know? We know that our initial velocity will be zero, okay? And obviously, as it falls down, uh, it will uh, it it will continue to uh, to increase in velocity, right? Right, so now the most important thing to note is that um, when we now have to draw a velocity time graph, please remember, ladies and gents, that you always need to label your graph. Okay, so this is going to be velocity against time. So here's my velocity and I'm going to label it. It's in meters per second, okay? Uh, against time, uh, which is in seconds, right? Now, how will be the shape or how is the shape of this graph going to look like? Okay, so um, now I need to start considering which direction will I consider to be positive. Of course, it will make a difference whether you take up as positive or down as positive. Uh, so let's let's take down as positive in that, in this case, okay? So how will that graph look like? Now, it means you'll start at zero. So our graph is going to start at zero. Okay. Now, and that graph, uh, that means that as the velocity increases, just think about it. So let's say the velocity starts, you know, obviously uh, it will be, let's say, five meters per second. And then it will go 10 meters per second, 20 meters per second. But all of that in the positive direction, isn't it? Okay, so you end up with a straight line graph. Okay, so you end up with a straight line graph that is increasing. So as time increases, your velocity increases. All right, now um, I would have actually taken the time to show you why the velocity time graph is a straight line. Um, but um, if you don't mind, can I just uh, just go through uh, all the graphs so that we can just understand how they would look like, okay? So in this case, I know that my velocity time graph would look like that. Now, obviously, if you were to take up as positive, okay, I'm just going to draw that in uh, a different color. Um, it would look something like this. Now, if you had to take up as positive, in fact, let me show up as positive. So it means in that case, okay, up uh, would be your positive direction. But remember, where is your ball going? It's going down, right? So in this case, it means that if you've taken up as positive, your ball would be moving uh, downwards, let's say minus 5, minus 10. Uh, obviously, it's moving in the negative direction. So what would that graph look like? It would end up looking something like this. So it would be the reflection of this graph around the time axis. Okay. 
So remember, this would be a velocity versus time graph. Okay, so just uh, keep that in mind. Our straight line graph becomes a uh, a straight line. Now, uh, I mean, uh, uh, becomes a, a reflection. Okay, so uh, you'd only need to draw one of the graphs. So if you've taken up as positive, okay, uh, this would be the green graph would be the graph that you draw. If you've taken down as positive, then obviously the blue graph would be the one that you'd need to draw okay right now uh, very quickly whenever you've got a straight line graph because i'm um, uh, in 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 our next lesson what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a past exam question okay and i'm going to show you how to then work uh, uh, from graphs okay uh, in this case just when you are uh, when you are asked to draw a graph this is what it's supposed to look like okay so um what are the two things that you need to consider when you draw a, a, a straight line graph? I mean, uh, any graph for that matter. I want you to please note the gradient underneath this graph is actually your acceleration due to gravity. Now, if it's a falling body or if it's a projectile motion, it's, it's under free fall. So what would be the acceleration? Of course, the acceleration would be 9.8, right? So in this case, I want you to note the gradient under a velocity time graph, okay, would be change in velocity, change in y, divided by change in x, okay? And what is our x in this case? Our x is time. So in this particular case, I want you to note that the gradient is velocity. And remember, velocity is meters per second, isn't it? Okay, divided by time. And what is time measured in? In seconds. So if you were to simplify that mathematically, what do you end up with? You end up with, okay, this would end up as meters per second, okay? But exponentially, if I take that to the top, it also changes sign, okay? So that's meters per second, per second. So what do you end up with? That's going to be meters per second, squared okay i hope you can see that so in this case i want you to please note the gradient under a velocity time graph okay will uh, will always be the gravitational acceleration so that means that not only do we know that it gives us acceleration but we also know the value of the gradient so the gradient under this graph would actually be 9.8 so obviously if you've taken uh, uh, down as positive it would be a positive 9.8 if you've taken up as positive then it would be a negative 9.8 so the gradient under that graph there would be negative 9.8 okay right now let's take a second scenario so i'm going to come back to these very same scenarios and we're going to take the displacement time graph and we'll end up with acceleration time, okay? Right, now, suppose we've got another scenario. So this is scenario number two, whereby we are, okay, let's take a scenario where we are now throwing, okay? Let's say we are throwing a ball vertically upwards. So let's say we are throwing it down, It, uh, I mean up rather, it reaches maximum height, and then it comes back down. Uh, let's say, just for argument's sake, it passes the point. Of course, I'm just trying to show that there's two motions, one going up and another coming down. Uh, but this would almost happen uh, around the same place, right? So let's say there it passes the point where it was thrown. And then it goes all the way downwards and reaches the ground. Okay? So what would that look like as a graph? Okay, a velocity time graph. Now, let's draw the velocity time graph there. Now, again, it would be up to you. Whether you want to choose up as positive or down as positive, it's really, really up to you. So, think about it. Let's just say, for argument's sake, we throw it at a velocity of uh, 5 meters per second. Okay? So, uh, it would be 5 meters per second. Okay? Uh, let, let's just choose a direction. Okay? let's take upwards as positive all right so that means that it would be it would start at positive five 
Of course, what would happen as it goes up? That velocity decreases, right? So it would be positive 5, positive 3, positive 2. And then when we get there, the velocity, we know that it's going to be equal to 0, isn't it? Okay. And then, then it starts going down. So then it starts becoming negative now. Let's say it becomes negative 1, negative 2. And then obviously uh, at the point, the velocity where it passed, uh, uh, where it started rather, uh, would now be equal but just different in sign, isn't it? So it would be negative 5 here, okay? And remember the same time it took going up would be the same time it takes coming down, right? So negative 5 and let's say negative uh, 10 and you know up until whatever the final velocity is just before it just touches the ground okay so what would that velocity time graph look like okay now you agree with me that velocity time graph is not going to start at zero remember when we started our velocity was not zero, but in this case it was five, right? Or whatever it is that, uh, uh, whatever velocity that would be given, right? So in this case, I want to just show you quickly, okay? So what would that graph look like? So now we're going to start at positive five, okay? And what happened? It decreased in the positive direction. So you'd have a graph that looks like that. Okay, and it passes zero. So this is where it reaches maximum height. So this point here shows us the maximum height. Okay, remember at maximum height, our velocity was zero. Remember, this is velocity in meters per second. Okay, and this is time in seconds. All right, so now passes that point. Okay, and then what happens after that? Then it starts becoming negative and it keeps becoming bigger and bigger in the negative direction. So I want you to think about it. Suppose we say it took two seconds going up. So it means the time there would be two seconds, isn't it? But then remember the time uh, two seconds going up at time four seconds, two seconds up, two seconds down, it would be passing the point where it, uh, um, where it started. So if this was five, then this point here at four seconds should be, okay, minus five. But we know it's going to pass that point, and so what's going to happen to our graph? It's going to actually... Uh, 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 our velocity is going to keep increasing uh, as it goes uh, downwards, okay? So, uh, just another very important thing. Once again, we know what is the gradient underneath this graph. Remember that gradient in this case, uh, we said it shows us uh, gravitational acceleration, right? So, as a result, what would my gradient actually be in this case? So all the way here, can you see that this is a negative gradient? But why is it a negative gradient? Because remember, we've chosen up as positive. So gravitational acceleration, it doesn't matter where the ball is. Anywhere that the ball is, gravity is always pulling it vertically downwards, isn't it? So um, uh, gravitational acceleration doesn't change sign. In this case, it always remains uh, vertically downwards. So as a result, that's why the gradient here, we know that's going to be negative 9.8, right? And let's say it landed on the ground at minus 20. Uh, so in this case, this would be your velocity uh, when it reached the ground, and this would be minus 20 over there, okay? Just another thing that is very interesting to note, okay? Now... Remember we said the gradient under the velocity time graph tells us about gravitational acceleration, right? But there's something else that we know, and what is that? We know that the area underneath the graph also shows us displacement. I'm, not, I'm going to show you just now. So if you were to take the area under the velocity time graph, okay? Now look at this. What would be the area under this graph? I'm just going to shade it uh, in a different color so that you can see it. 
okay so the area underneath this graph remember so it's that triangle over there but now it's also that triangle over there okay so if you were to find the area underneath this graph okay um, now how do we normally calculate area okay area is always you know the length multiplied by the breadth or you can say the length multiplied by the height okay so if you think about it it's the length multiplied by the height but remember because it's a triangle the scaling factor there is a half so we always say well it's a half base multiplied by perpendicular height right so if you think about what our base represents our base represents um, a time so let's put t there okay and our height represents velocity so that's v there so i'm just going to take the si units of course a half is a half is a half uh, that changes nothing right but if you think about the si units okay so what's going to happen time is in seconds velocity is in meters per second so i'm taking something that's in second and i'm multiplying by something that's in meters per second now of course the rules of exponents here uh, i've got two bases that are the same and i'm going to add the exponent so my exponent is one and minus one one minus one is zero anything to the power zero is one so i i end up with just meters there so you can see that i end up with a um, okay uh, i end up with something which is in meters so in this case if i want or if they ever ask me given a graph okay and they want to ask me about uh, the displacement they say use the graph to calculate displacement i simply know in this case i'm going to just use the area okay all right now uh, what i want to do um uh, you know i, I just want to show you uh, for these two graphs okay how am i going to draw the displacement time graph okay for these two scenarios so that you can be able to see it okay so i'm just going to make sure i do it on the same uh, place all right so i'm just going to move this just a little bit uh, so that i have enough space now let's come back to um, this uh, graph over here so what would be uh, how would the position time graph look like uh, for that scenario there and by the way once again i'm still going to maintain downwards as positive okay so that it doesn't uh, complicate you know what in fact le let's take the upwards as positive for the position time graph i can assure you of this ladies and gents that you know it always helps to have um to take upwards as positive you know why because the graph kind of um you know um uh, it kind of becomes a picture of what you actually see all right of what the ball is or whatever object what it's going to do so for the position here let's take the ground as our zero position meaning let's take the ground as our reference point so where do we start if we take the ground as our zero position it means we started uh, suppose we said you know the building is uh you know whatever value let's say uh 40 meters high okay all right i'm i'm just thumb sucking a value so if we said the building is 40 meters high okay so meaning wherever it is that i start i start 40 meters above my reference point right so my graph if i take up as positive my graph is going to start now remember we said up is positive so it's above me so it's 40 meters uh, above my reference point so remember if i take the ground as my reference position so it means that my time axis would actually uh you know you can kind of look at it as your as your as your reference point right so my graph would start at 40 so remember at time zero i'm already 40 meters above my uh, my, my my level my ground my zero position right and then what happens as time progresses the graph or rather 
my object is coming closer and closer so it's moving towards my zero position so what you will end up having is a graph that looks something like this okay so if you took up as positive your graph would end up uh, looking something like this of course this would be the time where it reached the ground okay so you end up with a graph that looked like that of course if you took uh, uh, down as positive um you know it would be uh, the the you know the the reflection of this graph about the time axis okay right i want to quickly go for this one all right we consider up as positive all right so how would the position time graph uh, uh look like okay oh goodness i didn't give myself enough space okay so how would the position time graph look like uh, for this guy over there all right so um, again let's take the ground as our zero position okay say our building whatever height it was okay say okay let's maintain the 40 okay so it's 40 meters so it's going to start at 40 meters uh, above us but it's going to go even further up okay so let's say it covers a distance of, you know, a displacement going upwards, um, say of 10. All right. So it's going, my graph is going to start at 40. Okay. So at zero, my graph is already at 40. But then it's going to go upwards, reach maximum height. You remember when I said to you the position time graph kind of shows us the picture of what we see? So it's kind of like what you see is what you get, right? So in this case, it's going to turn, all right, come back to the same position. So remember, we had said this is two seconds, right? So it means this would be at two, this would be at four, you know, coming back to the same position, but it would pass that point and then um, uh, it would reach the ground. So that's my zero position, okay? So remember, we did say uh, that uh, when you must label your graphs, right? So this would be position, okay, which is in meters against time, which is in seconds. Remember also to just label the position, okay, versus time, okay? Uh, similarly here, you are going to say velocity versus time, okay? So, um, uh, this is what your, your, your graph would look like, okay? So, at this point, this is when it would land at the ground, okay? And, um, yeah, so this is what your graph would look like. So, in this case, uh, just keep in mind that your position versus time graph uh, kind of shows you the picture of what you see there. So, when they ask you to draw a position versus time graph, this is what you would get okay now very quickly i know many people would have an interest on this one i want to take a bouncing ball scenario okay and show you what that graph looks like um, but quickly before i do that now what would the acceleration versus time graph look like now remember that acceleration just simply remains the same so i'm going to just draw an acceleration versus time graph um, and unfortunately, uh, acceleration versus time wouldn't be uh, different for the two graphs. So remember, acceleration is in meters per second squared, and this would be time in seconds. Okay, so how would the acceleration versus time graph look like? So if we took uh, up as positive, remember that gravitational acceleration is acting downwards. So you would end up with a graph that is at minus 9.8. So your graph would be uh, uh, over there at minus 9.8. Of course, if you took downwards as positive, uh, remember that your acceleration uh, would be positive in that case. Uh, 
so it would be there at positive 9.8 remember that gravity gravitational acceleration never changes it's always constant it doesn't matter what the object is doing gravitational acceleration remains constant at 9.8 so that's why you end up with a graph like that okay uh, hopefully sometime in the future what i will do is i will show you why these graphs this one is a straight line and that one is a parabola okay uh, because it all comes from equations of motion but uh, that's another story for the future right now we are uh, edging very closer towards those prelims so uh, we are making sure that we're trying to grasp all the necessary information okay let's talk about the bouncing ball quickly as i conclude now suppose we've got a scenario all right where okay let's say we are throwing a ball okay look it it really doesn't matter where it's going to go uh let's say we are throwing a ball um let's say uh let's say upwards all right let's say upwards and we obviously miss it on its way down and then let's say it goes down and it touches the ground and then suppose let's say it therefore bounces and it reaches another height and goes down so so it would bounce there all right so what i'm going to do let me try and label the different points so that we can see it and then draw the relevant graph okay so um let's call that position a let's call that position b when it gets to the first maximum height okay and uh, let's call that position c now uh, on the ground i'm just going to do different things there so that you can understand my rationale okay let's say just before it touches the ground so just moments before it touches the ground i'll call that d okay and then um just after it uh, touches the ground so when it leaves the ground okay uh, remember it's bouncing so it goes down and then it goes back up so just after it has left the ground let's call that position e and then let's call that f and let's call that position g okay so what would that look like okay so you would have a graph that looks something like that now let's draw a velocity versus time graph for this scenario okay so once again we're going to have velocity which is in meters per second and you're going to have time in seconds okay so what would that look like you'd say well first of all let's consider upwards as positive okay and if we take up as positive so it means that now i'm going to have suppose we say it starts at uh, you know 10 meters per second so your graph is not going to start at zero okay at time zero your graph is going to start at 10 and so what is it going to do it's going to decrease velocity until you get to zero so once again you're going to have your graph starting at 10 of course if you dropped it you are going to start that graph at zero isn't it okay so there's your graph it decreases your velocity decreases remember it's a straight line graph right until it gets to zero and then what happens then it starts to go down so meaning it's now turning to be negative remember we've taken up as positive so it was positive here positive and decreasing now it's going to be negative and increasing right so it's going to be negative and increasing in value right up until we get to d right so d would be let's say d is that position over there because it should be much higher than 10 right so so let's say d is that position over there so now this is the velocity at d now ladies and gents i want you to please note okay now what happens remember that this 
motion over here happens over a very short period of time okay so what's going to happen on this graph is that it's going to change if you just imagine a graph uh, that uh, you know the a, a, an object landing there say at 20 meters per second now if it's an it's an elastic collision you know obviously it would have left at 20 meters per second but usually you find that it's an inelastic collision, meaning that, uh, you know, some of the energy is converted into uh, other types of energy to distort the ball or even sound energy. OK, so when it leaves there, it leaves with a velocity that is less than the uh, velocity uh, that it arrived uh, on the ground with. OK, so say it leaves there with a velocity, say, of uh, 18 meters per second. OK. So now remember, now it's going up. It was going down at minus 20. So this would be that velocity over there. I hope you don't mind me thumb sucking those values. You know, I'm just uh, taking abrupt values. Okay, just for the uh, for illustrative purposes. Okay, so what you would end up having there is that it would arrive at 20 meters per second and suddenly change direction. Okay suddenly change direction to 18 okay so um let's say there's the velocity now of course this would be a this would be position b this would be position uh, sorry position c would be somewhere at minus 10 over there okay so that would be position c this now would be position d but remember that D and E happen over a very short space of time, right? So in this case, it changes direction very quickly. So remember, whilst this shows me maximum height, when it cuts through the time axis there, it shows me maximum height. Remember that for a bounce, you kind of see that almost vertical uh, uh, you know, uh, a change there. Okay, so it almost vertical. Sometimes what they may do is that they may show you just the time lapse, the very short time lapse there. So you'd have a difference in time between those two points, right? So um, in this case, there's D. And then now E, this is when it leaves the ground. It's that point there. And remember, it was negative one moment and then it suddenly changes to being positive. OK, and then what happens as it goes up now, it starts decreasing again. Remember, it's going up, so it's positive, but it's also decreasing. So from E, it decreases until you get to the next maximum height. Oh, um, I've drawn that in a terrible way. OK, so in this case, it would look something like this. OK, so this would be E and this would be F the next maximum height okay now this is going to be in the way sorry about that ladies and gents so i'm just going to have to move it so in this case remember now again it reaches zero which is that maximum height at f and then it starts becoming negative again and increases so you would have a graph that ends up like this this would be g uh, at that point there okay Right, so I hope that makes sense. So in that case, let's uh, quickly conclude. How would it look like now for a position versus time graph? Okay, for a position versus time graph uh, for the same scenario. And you'll see why this is so appreciated. So position versus time graph. Remember, that's a parabola. Okay. So how would a position versus time graph look like? So in this case, uh, this is in meters and you would label it there position versus time versus time. OK, so um, if we said, let's say our our building was, you know, 40 meters high. OK, I don't know why I keep going for 40. Uh, perhaps you can play that on the lotto. <laughs> Try your luck, eh? <laughs> so in this case, uh, start that at 40. All right. If we took the ground as our zero position, okay? So it would start at 40, okay? And it would go high. Uh, 
again remember it's now a parabola this is the maximum height that's b over there and then what happens then it turns okay then until it gets to the ground that's position d okay and of course there's a little bit of a time lapse between those two points and then it would start to descend again reach the next maximum height and you would have it uh, get to point f so you can almost tell if you look at this and look at that they look alike isn't it they they are similar to each other um i'm sure someone is probably asking but what if i didn't take the ground as my zero position uh, what if i took the point of throw okay uh, or the point of departure of the ball as my zero position well you'd still have the same graph um uh, you'd still have the same graph. Um, the difference would be that your position time graph wouldn't now start at 40, but it would start at zero. So you would have something like this. So whatever the difference, let's say, suppose that it went five meters up. Here, it would have went from 40 to 45, isn't it? Okay. But... Um, here it would go from 0 to 5 this would be the highest point and then it would come back to the same point okay and now it would pass the point the reference point and go vertically downwards okay all right so you would end up with something that looks like that okay same shape as the okay sorry about that same shape as the one that we drew here okay but um, the only difference now is that remember now we are taking the point of throw as our zero position so we're simply saying okay uh, definitely when it comes to the second maximum height it's below that point of throw right this would be our reference point so this would be our point our reference point so it would be below that reference point over there. So you'd get that shape of a graph. Okay, right. And obviously, finally, uh, how would our um, acceleration time graph look like? Okay, for this scenario. Okay, I'm going to just draw it over there at the bottom. Okay. So this one um, is definitely the easiest one of them all okay so what would be our acceleration time graph and how would it look like okay i'm just i just want to move this a little bit okay so uh what would it look like it would be note remember we've taken up as positive so it means that acceleration is in this case going to be negative 9.8 okay and so you'd have this over there but remember the moment it touches the ground so between that d and e remember that what the ground is doing is that it's exerting a huge amount of force i mean think about it to stop this thing that was moving at such a high velocity to have to stop it but not only stop it but now uh, thrust it upwards you'd have to have a huge force isn't it so in this case remember that acceleration is directly proportional to the force so therefore you've got a force a net force that's going upwards there that's why it's changing the motion uh, of this ball or of this object so as a result your acceleration would be huge but in this case in the upward direction okay so uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you, uh, yeah so in this case you'd have your uh, um, object having a huge acceleration there and then just for that brief moment when it's on the ground okay and then again it now the moment that it leaves at e okay it would go back to being something like this okay at 9.8 once again so this would be just a brief moment when it touches the ground okay um so just for you to consider uh, 
our acceleration has always been moving downwards okay so it's always been negative but just for that brief moment it, ex it experiences a force remember gravitational force was always acting downwards hence it was negative but for that brief moment it experiences a force that is upwards and in this case that's why that force is extremely huge and the acceleration is huge and so that's why it becomes positive for that moment because it's in our positive direction but then afterwards immediately after it leaves the ground that acceleration now becomes uh, um, uh, and 9.8 once again and remember this is time in seconds this is acceleration in meters per second squared okay so this is what your graphs would look like and once again ladies and gents remember just like we did you know that the acceleration underneath this graph and i want you to see uh, the gradient here and the gradient there are exactly the same right so uh, remember the gradient there would be 9.8 okay but remember this gradient here you see this almost vertical line here it tells you that the gradient there is somewhat different which is uh, that acceleration over there okay right uh, i hope ladies and gents this video helps in you understanding um, velocity time and position time graphs uh, what i will do is i will try to um, then uh, do past exam questions uh, in the near future right just so that you can see how to apply that and also um, you know when you are given a graph how would you then interpret that um, to then answer questions based on graphs okay otherwise please uh, if you liked this lesson please remember to just hoi me a thumbs up okay and uh, by the way don't forget to subscribe for those of you who haven't and please tell some more people tell them hey we are learning so much physics hey and we are getting good and thank you for the kind comments ladies and gents otherwise i'll see you guys next time and thank you so much sharp sharp